so uh, repentance so repentance what is the meaning of repentance uh, anybody wants to say something can you just say what is repentance you can make it interactive and after some time you can have some questions also yes somebody said something repentance can anybody say uh, in short uh, yes turn from our sins or uh, having a desire to live righteous life and don't want to do sin right yeah. so repentance uh, when you say is an activity repentance is an is an activity it's not something it's just in our, in our thoughts and we don't do anything so repentance is an activity of reviewing one's own actions and feeling contrition or regret for the thing which has uh, things which have been done wrong you know feeling a regret or a remorse about the things that we have done wrong accompanied by a change of mind and heart not to want to do that that is repentance repentance is first of all trying to think of what we have done and then feeling the regret of the wrong thing that we have done it doesn't end there but it is wanting to change our mind and attitude don't want to do that again that is turn away from that okay in the old testament the word repentance more than the word repentance the word return to god turn and return to god was there but in the new testament uh yeah i i will answer brother after uh, after this message we will uh, we will discuss some you know any doubts and thing okay brother so in the old testament it was return to god turn from your sins and return to god that was repentance basically it's the same the meaning is the same so now the greek word for repentance is metanoia it's not important for us to remember that word but why it is uh, why i say this is because and the meaning of the word metanoia is a change of mind and heart the greek word metanoia means a change of mind and heart okay now there's another greek word called metamelomia okay there's another word called metamelomia which is also used but in english it is repentance that's the thing about english has got only a few words to express whereas greek has got many so greek word for change of mind and heart is meta, metanomia uh, metanoia and for there's another word called metamelomia which is used in uh, matthew 27 3 regarding uh, we read that matthew 27 3 this is in the case of judas Matthew twenty-seven three. So when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. And he said, "I have sinned, betraying innocent blood." Okay. so uh, this word also is sometimes in the some translations probably it may be uh, repentance i'll have to just check that but this word remorse uh, uh, is metamelomia and that cannot be called as uh, repentance true repentance okay i just want to show the difference between true repentance and uh, uh, just feeling a regret and remorse so that is that doesn't complete repentance okay that is very important because uh, as we come we'll uh, i'll just show you uh, see david king david when he committed sin the sin of uh, adultery with bathsheba and then followed up with a like a murder of uh, uriah her husband 
by sending him purposely to the battlefield okay so he got he done he did two sins two grievous sins one is adultery other one is murder and then the prophet nathan came and and told him a small story and then he said you are the man so when when david till that time david was not conscious about his sin but when he came to know then he truly you know what he said you know he said i have sinned in in second samuel 12 13 about his incident david said i have sinned and then he wrote this psalm psalm 51 okay a beautiful psalm of repentance okay so there he, it was a repentant heart and he, he acknowledged i have sinned but there have been people who have said i have sinned but i am not truly repented so that's the that's a thing that we should be careful about we can say i have sinned but we can just leave it there that is you know we uh, we uh, see the some examples of pharaoh the pharaoh when uh, when uh, he was not allowing the israelites to leave to the promised land he was very stubborn and then god sent uh, the different plagues first god sent when god sent the hail and people were all you know getting hurt by that heavy hail then he said you know he said in Exodus 9:27 I have sinned huh he said I have sinned but his heart got hardened again and he said I will not leave you then god had to follow it up with sending locusts the whole land of egypt was all the green things of the egypt was eaten away by the locusts and then again he he said I have sinned okay but still his heart got hardened and he did not But he acknowledged that he sinned. Uh, then we uh, know about. Then we read about ba- Balak, Balak the prophet. Balak the prophet. He, he, uh, God told him not to go uh, to that place in Moab. But he, uh, he set out even you know, to go. On the second time, he said, when God, uh, when when he asked, then God said, okay, you go. so he he went out and he when he went out on his with his donkey the donkey saw an angel and the angel was blocking the way and so he could not go but then he started beating the donkey the donkey said and then the angel of god spoke to him why have you started going like this then he realized I have, then he said i have sin he also said belak said i have sin but then he asked if if it does not please if it pleases god then i will go okay here was a uh, repentance which I want to say that repentance which is not a true repentance same way we saw he had a regret when he uh, lost his birthright for a bowl of soup uh, and then when he saw that his birthright was taken away uh, then he felt a regret okay but no repentance by the word of god says he found no repentance okay so repentance is not just remember repentance is not just feeling uh a remorse or sadness for what we have done we have done something wrong and we feel, many people can feel sad even a, a non christian can feel sad but when we want to change our way see we may have committed some sin okay and we feel bad about it because sometimes it is because other people have found it found out about it many times is that way people feel bad because other people have known about it that's a very bad thing that means we don't have fear of god okay we do not know that god is watching us all the time okay okay we have a fear of god and we uh, we have done something wrong and we feel bad about it but if we don't want to fully change a 100% turn then our repentance is not complete so it's very important to have true repentance okay and it's a gift of god god has given a god has given man this actually a gift to repent because you know uh, some people you know we, we may think that these uh, people who are terrorists and murderers and all uh, there is no repentance on they had they were also children like us babies like us sweet and tender but over a period of time 
they violated their conscience and they became so hard that they, they were not able to repent they lost the ability to repent so i want to, uh, i want i don't want to uh, for a second leave uh, what is that lose the ability to repent in my life because the repentance is the key to always go back to god we may we may fall but we can go back to god and get right with him not that we have to always fall but the way to the avenue to return to god is always repentance okay so uh, so we can say that repentance is a door to the kingdom of god all of us have come to know christ uh, not by any not by some good works or anything but by through repentance that is the right door and we come into the kingdom of god so then uh, what are the things that affect us when we repent our thoughts our words and our deeds all three will change okay uh, many times many people think that god is so you know they think of god in a very uh, bad way they think that god is you know not a good god he's punishing people or he's not doing the good things for us bob mind is called you know a distorted mind about god but repentance when we have we have the right thoughts about god okay we think about god in the right way that's the first point of repentance you think of god the, that he is holy that he is just he is not unfair that whatever he does is right that starts the repentance okay and we are wrong we have failed him. that is the first point of repentance in our thoughts it starts then we confess to god if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive our sins so second part is with our words in another word in the, in the old testament it says take words and come to the lord okay so we take lord i have done this particular be specific about our sin never say never say it's a mistake what i made a mistake lord i have committed this sin this, uh, this grievous sin so because jesus did not come to save us from our mistakes he came to save us from our sins so so we when we say suppose we get angry and we say and we take it lightly ah, i just got angry because somebody did something uh, provoked me that's why i got angry then that is not the way to repent the way to repent is jesus should not be angry at that when somebody has provoked so many people provoked he was reviled and he did not revile and return okay but he entrusted himself to the lord so that is our standard okay so when we get provoked and we are angry then how we have to say is lord i want to say that how i say lord i have i have done terribly something wrong okay okay that person may may have provoked me that's true but lord i'm really sorry i i'm really sorry and i i don't want to do it ever again i want this to be the last time that i have done it can I have any i want to challenge you to pray like this prayer any sin that you do if you say if you want to repent and say lord maybe i have spoken rudely to somebody not very harshly but it had a bite or maybe i was not wise but when i realize it that it has hurt someone <clears throat> i want to say lord i want this to be the last time i don't want it to be repeated again and be the last time and then i'm really sorry please forgive me so i've confessed my sin and i don't want to do it it's so a lord jesus and the lord jesus does his rest he washes me and he cleanses me and i'm back in fellowship with him which is a which is the best thing in our life to have fellowship with the lord okay so we take words and then not only word uh, thoughts and words but our deeds god will god will give us grace because we cannot with our own strength stop anger or, or any other sin but we can ask, and if, the, if there is uh, why deeds are important because suppose we have hurt somebody then we need to that person's hurt we need to what do you say bring a healing that healing is a word of apology and sorry is always a word of healing okay when some when we 
uh, when somebody does something uh, to us, uh, hurt, hurt us, and then they come and apologize, it brings a healing to us. We feel all right afterwards. Same way, when we hurt others, we when we say truly, not just by words, you know, but when we truly say, I'm really sorry, what I've done is not right, then it brings healing. Okay? Healing in situations. So many heal, uh, situations are healed because of that. So, uh, thoughts, words, and deeds, they are the part of repentance. Okay? The Bible says uh, about repentance and faith, they are combined. Repentance toward God and faith in our Lord Jesus brings salvation, okay? brings us closer to God. Just, uh, just only repentance, not alone repentance, but repentance and faith toward God. Repentance and faith in what Jesus has done. The faith of God brings salvation to us. So, <clears throat> what are the sins by which we need, we need to repent? There are two types of sin, two categories of sin. One is the sin of commission. Uh, if you look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. It says, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. So, so <clears throat> sins of commission are the things that we do wrong. Maybe we lust after somebody. Maybe we uh, speak evil of somebody. <clears throat> Maybe we are jealous. Maybe it's, it's in our thoughts. Maybe we are proud. Those are sins of commission. Okay, And... Uh, there are so many types of sins. I don't, I don't need to tell. We all know the different types of sins that we we struggle with. Okay, which which we get tempted by. So which we get tempted by, we all know. Okay. So these are the sins which we are sins of commission. For that, <clears throat> examples are disobedience, and lying, and stealing. If that is still there, these are all uh, uh, sins of commission. Lying is one thing which uh, should not. Uh, be there in the Christian's life, by the way. Okay, uh, I just want to take that thing because uh, if you're a Christian and if you still lie, uh, then you then the Christian life will not go uh, well, very well. I tell you why. I was a born liar, you know, second natured liar. For me to tell lies, even without thinking, it would come out. So much I used to practice lying that. Even even I don't think and still I can tell lies. So, but God delivered me after, and after coming to Christ, that was after some one or two months because of the practice, God delivered me and uh, I tell you even now, of one sin that I am really, uh, really cautious about is lying. Anger and other things and all, I am not so much, but one thing, I should never tell a Untruth. I should be a man of truth. When I go to my workplace, people should not say that this person can tell lies. That should be our reputation. He's a man of truth. He will not tell lies. That should be our testimony. Okay? God will give us grace. So, this is a sin of commission. Sin of omission. Sin of omission is uh, James chapter 4, verse 17. James 4, 17. says therefore to the one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him it is sin so here we are not doing something wrong but we know we have to do something but we are not doing it that is a sin of omission okay sin of omission so uh, the example is you know the good samaritan the, uh, the story of the good samaritan where the good samaritan the Man who, man who was uh, robbed and was lying down in the street. There was a priest and a Levite who walked that same road and they did not turn to help him. Only the Good Samaritan did that. So that was a sin of omission on our part. Okay. So uh, there are things that we need to do for our family, for our parents, for our brothers and sisters. Uh, 
Jesus said that you just don't speak, but when a person is having some need, don't just say words, but go and give him something. So things like that are the sins of omission. So for all these things, we need to repent our repentance. Okay? Now, how? What is true repentance? True repentance uh, comes from knowing the kindness of God. Okay, uh, Romans chapter two verse four says. Romans chapter two verse four. Sometimes we think that repentance comes because of the, you know, the judgment of God. That is one way, but the the New Testament primary way of repentance is uh, Romans chapter four. Romans chapter two verse four. It's a wonderful verse. Or do you think lightly of the riches of His kindness? Riches of His kindness. That is what God is. Not uh, rich of his kindness and forbearance and patience. God is forbearing and patient. If you know how much God is patient with us, we will be really thankful. Not knowing that the kindness of God leads you to repentance. So one of the powerful ways of repentance is, you know, is to know that our God is so wonderful and loving. And he's so kind and patient. And I repent, Lord, I don't want to make you sad. So that is one one way of uh, repentance. The other thing is uh, to know the greatness of God. Our God is not uh, the gods of the world, the gods of made of stone and wood. Our God is awesome and holy. He's light. And when we see that, oh, God, I'm dealing with you. And I'm your, I'm your child. Uh, when we are believers. So Lord, I'm sorry. That is knowing the greatness of God. Uh, Job Chapter 42, verse 6. Job chapter 42, verse 6 said, Job said, Therefore, I retract, I repent in dust and ashes. Job was telling so many things, you know, because you're self righteous. But when, when he really came to know God and the greatness of God, he said, Therefore, I retract and I repent in dust and ashes. So that's the second way of repent, repentance. When we see the greatness of our and the might, uh, awesomeness of our God. The third one is a very important one for the Christian life that is called a fountain. It's called a godly sorrow leads us to repentance. That is in, anybody knows where it is? I trust somebody, some of you know it. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 and 10. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. This is when Paul wrote a very strong letter rebuking the Corinthians for their, you know, they were tolerating sin in, the, in their midst. And a man was uh, having an affair with his uh, stepmother. Okay. So, <clears throat> so he, he gave a very sharp word. But that Word, you know, instead of they, instead of them saying that you know we have not done it and all that, justifying themselves, they all felt very bad. So nine, I now rejoice, not that you were made sorrowful. He didn't want to make them so sad because that is not an intention, but that you were made sorrowful to the point of repentance. For you were made sorrowful according to the will of God, in order that you might not suffer loss in anything. Now, for the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. So that is a sorrow which God, the Holy Spirit gives us when we do anything wrong. It is a sorrow. And that leads us to repentance. That leads us to change our ways. Okay? And uh, that does not lead to any regret. That does not lead to any regret. It leads to salvation. So there is a sorrow, godly sorrow, which is a, which is very different from the worldly sorrow. The worldly sorrow is, you know, you lose something, or somebody is sick, or somebody dies, or, or something like that. You feel very sad, or not, not, not only that, when somebody uh, corrects, uh, corrects us, okay, and we feel bad, and we have that worldly sorrow instead of godly sorrow, then. That leads us to, uh, it produces death, spiritual death. But the godly sorrow 
is a sorrow which the Holy Spirit enables us to get and that leads us to salvation. So, so what are the benefits? What are the benefits of repentance? No? As I said, repentance is not only ABC, the starting point, but it is the XYZ also. Till the end of our life, we need repentance. Okay? So, the, the benefits of repentance is a heart cleansed through repentance. A heart is cleansed through repentance. A life free from the accusation and condemnation of the devil. Okay? When we have repentance, then the accusation and condemnation of the devil will not be there. Because the Bible says in 1 John 1 9 that we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we have confessed, we have repented. The devil has got no clue. And, and it helps us to have an intimate walk. It helps us to have an intimate walk with God. Repentance. Man, when we are always cleansed and by the blood of Christ, we have a constant communion with God. So, so that's what the benefits of repentance. Cleansed, uh, a heart cleansed through repentance, a life free from condemnation, and an intimate walk with God. So, <coughs> this is about repentance. We will. I'll just talk about uh, uh, about uh, baptism also. See, baptism. Now I'm talking about baptism. Baptism in the Christian uh, denominational churches or the traditional churches, uh, they have strayed away from the biblical baptism. <clears throat> I myself was uh, baptized as a child. You know? uh, they have a sprinkling. So as a small baby, uh, parents must have taken, uh, parents have taken me to the church and they have sprinkled and that's so they are baptized. Okay? That's the way many of these churches are. But now, in the last uh, 100 years or so, uh, God's Spirit has moved in many places and we have come back to the, the New Testament baptism, which is uh, a baby cannot repent, a baby does not know anything about Christ. Okay, the Bible says in, uh, in uh, Acts chapter 2, first of all, repentance, uh, baptism is commanded by Jesus. Okay, Jesus himself took baptism says to fulfill all righteousness <laughs> and we fi find the command of Jesus in Matthew chapter 28 okay uh, Jesus said in Matthew, Matthew chapter 28 verses uh, 19 and 20 go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always. So, first of all, it is a Jesus is one of the last words that he was speaking was go therefore and make disciples of all men, baptizing them, baptizing the disciples in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. So, first of all, it is a commandment of Jesus. Second part is that who can be baptized? So, not a not a baby, not anybody who wants to be baptized also because the uh, it says in Acts chapter 2 verse 38 and Peter said to them who the people who said uh, to whom he preached and they said their hearts were convicted and they said what shall we do he said uh, he said he said Peter said to them repent and let each of you be baptized in the name of the of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. So repent and then let each of you be baptized. So repentance precedes baptism. Okay. A one who has not repented cannot be baptized. Now, uh, during those days, the people used to there used to be the people used to be so fervent in their faith that they would immediately accept Christ and get baptized. Like the eunuch, the eunuch in Acts chapter 8, the Ethiopian eunuch. And Philip preached to him, he said in verse uh, 36, As they went along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look water, what prevents me from being baptized? He has just heard the gospel. And he's telling Philip, what prevents me from being baptized? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he and uh, and he ordered the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water and Philip as well as the eunuch and he baptized him. Okay? And the Philip went away rejoicing. Okay? 
because that is so it was it's almost giving the gospel and getting baptized same way in acts chapter 10 cornelius family they heard the gospel from peter and then in verse 48 acts chapter 10 48 and he ordered them to be baptized in the name of jesus christ so they were also baptized after this after this they received uh, the, the philippine jailer also was baptized in the same day that he received christ okay in acts chapter 16. so these were very days where uh, when they became believers they they had a cost the people they would not they were not you know they had to pay a price okay so uh, so that's why they were their baptism was genuine but nowadays what happened we in our time we think we uh, we think that it's really scriptural to do it and we study like myself i spent uh, months i think or a year trying to know whether it was needed and then when i was convinced i said so i should take and then i found a blessing it's not a ritual see baptism can be a ritual if uh, there is no change in our life so baptism we say is a outward expression of an internal reality okay baptism is an outward outward expression baptism is something outward of an internal re reality so if the internal reality is not there then baptism becomes a ritual you can just go in the water and come up there's nothing to it so so there is a significance to uh, apostle paul which these uh, disciples were not aware because the bible was not written it was written in, uh, in uh, apostle paul wrote in, in romans chapter 6 uh, so he mentions about baptism <clears throat> Okay, in Romans chapter 6, verse 3 onwards. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ have been baptized into his death? Okay. And verse 4. Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So baptism represents we are baptized into his death into his death. So Jesus died to sin. Jesus died. Why did Jesus die? Because he died to take away, to take away our sins. So his, his death was for a death to sin. Okay. So now when we take baptism, we go to the water and we go under the water. It symbolizes buried, being buried. Just like Jesus was buried because of death to sin. Okay. Same way we our life, we, our life of sin, we want to be buried. And then just as Jesus was raised, why Jesus was raised? Because he had, he had no sin. He had taken away, he had taken our sin, but he had no sin. And death follows only, only sin. I mean, sin is uh, followed by death. But Jesus did not have sin, because he was sinless. He did not come to sin. So death had no power over So God raised him from the dead. So God raised Jesus. And so we also, we are buried with Christ and we are raised along with him. The Bible says in verse chapter 6, uh, uh, verse 6, knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him. Okay. Now this is something which God has done, not we. Our old self, if you can say our own name, our old Matthew was crucified. When Jesus died, the old Matthew was crucified with him died with him now he has to be buried and when jesus was raised we were raised as a new man all of us okay this is what god has done confess it and believe it if you want to take one name uh, abraham ben was old self was crucified old abraham ben was crucified with christ and now when, he, when christ was raised we come as a new man new matthew new abraham ben. so so this is an outward expression, baptism of an inward reality. So it's very important for us. So this is the one reference of baptism and another reference is in Colossians chapter 2. Speaking the same thing. Colossians chapter 2 verse 12. Having been buried with him in baptism, again, in which you were raised up with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. So this is the uh, meaning of what baptism is so even if you don't understand the meaning but just to say lord i want to obey you because jesus you said and it's a your command okay? 
So this is <coughs> this is today's uh, word.